So actually, in this supplementary note, I'll tell you how to um, derive some of the formula in the in the textbook, but actually, it does not uh, mention it very clearly. Yeah, so here's the outline. I will uh, mention what is uh, the Maxwell equation in free space, and then we are using this condition to derive the wave equation in free space. Then by solving this uh, wave equation, we can uh, we can know the solution will be the the EM wave. Okay, so uh, first of all, uh, if you just ignore this. Uh, this web bar, then it is actually the differential form of the of the Maxwell equation. So you have uh, these two are the Gauss law, and then we have a uh, Faraday's law here, and also M uh, Ampere's law here. So considering the free space condition, it is that uh, we don't have any charges. We don't have any charges and we don't have any uh, current density here. We don't have any current density here. So, so we just make these two terms to be zero. So row to be zero, so right side will also be zero. So we have uh, this one and this one to be zero together. And for the Ampere's law, if J is zero, then we don't have this term, we only have this uh, time derivative on the right side for both uh, Faraday's law and also Ampere's law. Okay, so so the Maxwell equation of the differ in differential form will look like this. And we will use a identity called the curl of curl. Actually, you can check it on the Wikipedia. The curl of curl identity looks like this. And uh, if you don't believe, you can use the the um, the equation I used uh, yesterday. So you can take the cross product of the gradient operator uh, with this one, and then take the curl operation again. And then you can also uh, yeah calculate on the right side, and then you will see uh, they should be uh, this this identity should be correct. Okay, so we will make use of it directly. I will not prove it here. So now, given that we have this curl of curl identity, this one is the this one is the Faraday's law. Uh, this one is the Ampere's law in the free space. This one is also the Gauss law. Gauss law in the free space. So we can apply this one. We change f to e. Uh, f is a vector field, so we can make it to be e. So this one, this one, or yeah, actually we are we are actually taking curl on uh, for this equation on both sides, taking curl of this equation on both sides. So we will have curl of e, curl of e here, and take curl of e again. So we take uh, curl on curl on both sides. So we we will have uh, this equation. On the right side, if we take the curl, we can put it inside. Yeah, actually, if we if you are in the mathematics department, then you will need to prove uh, whether changing the order of the derivative is okay. But yeah, we just assume it to be correct. So we directly put this curl inside the time derivative here. So we have this one. And uh, yeah, for the right side, for the right side. Uh, Oh, we have, we have this one. We have this one. So we we can make it uh, e uh, e e e. So this one is actually this one. We can plug it here. So the next one, gradient of divergence of e. Gradient uh, divergence of e is zero according to the. Uh, Gauss law in free space uh, without any charge. So it, this one, this term will be zero. This term will be zero, uh, zero. And then for this one, uh, we can directly put it here. Okay. So we have this one equals to this one. This one we also plug in uh, curl of B here. Curl of B here we can plug in to in this one into here 
plug in this one into here so we will have uh, we will have uh, so this one is zero this one is zero and then we have a negative this one we call it the Laplacian P-L-A-Z-I-A-N Laplacian 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 Okay, so this one, if we plug in the, uh, this one is the Ampere's law in the free space, you will plug it here. So mu naught, epsilon naught will put outside because it's a constant. And then we will have the first derivative of an E with respect to time. This is another time derivative. So we totally have a second derivative of the E view with respect to time. Okay, so this one is zero. Finally, uh, this is negative, this is negative, so we will have uh, multiply uh, negative 1 on both sides, so we will have a Laplacian of E equals mu naught epsilon naught second derivative of an E view with respect to time. This is one of the wave equation, uh, one of the wave equation. So this is the wave equation. And similarly, we can derive the wave equation for the magnetic field. So similarly, uh, we use the curl of curl identity, and then we have this one, the uh, Ampere's law. This is uh, Faraday's law. This is Gauss law for the magnetic field. So we take the gradient for this equation on both sides, and then we will have curl of curl of B. And then uh, we put this curl inside this time derivative. So we have a curl of E here. And then now we plug in this curl of E to be negative partial B partial T into here. So we have a second derivative of time. Here we have a negative sign. We have a negative sign due to this one. So we have negative sign here. And then this one. This one is nothing but here. So we make it B, B, B. So we have gradient of uh, divergence of B and then negative uh, minus uh, Laplacian of B. So according to the Gauss law for the magnetic field, this one is zero. So this one is zero. And then we finally get that or multiply negative one on both sides. So we have Laplacian of B equals mu naught epsilon naught partial B uh, second uh, partial derivative of B with respect to time. Actually, this is the um, uh, wave equation for the magnetic field, which has the same form as the uh, e wave equation for the electric or E field, E field. The only difference is that you change E into B, and then both equation looks exactly the same. Okay, so here, uh, so here we have a wave equation for E field and B field. And also we denote C to be one over square root of uh, mu naught epsilon naught in this equation. In this equation, and according to the uh, theory of the wave equation, we know that this term, this term is the is actually like uh, the wave equation is something like uh, Laplacian of. Uh, phi equals 1 over v square and then partial second partial derivative of the phi uh, with respect to time so this term this term will be 1 over the uh, square of the speed of the wave uh, speed of the wave square 1 over it so c will be 1 over square root of a mu naught epsilon naught due to the due to the wave equation so we can actually rewrite it as a 1 over c squared because c is the speed of light. We know that this is the EM wave. So we put it like this. And actually we will not solve it for three dimension because the Laplacian, the Laplacian is something like Laplacian is like a partial second partial derivative of x plus second partial derivative of, of y direction and plus second derivative of z direction. Uh, this is the Laplacian, Laplacian, something like this, because it is like uh, partial partial x i plus uh, this Laplacian is like 
this one dotted with this one. So it is like partial partial y j plus a partial partial z k dotted with partial partial x i plus a partial partial y j plus partial partial z k. Okay. So if we have inner product, i dot i will be 1, so we only have a second derivative of x, and then also j dot j equals 1, we have a second derivative of, of y, and then also parcel parcel zk, parcel parcel zk, okay, so we have a, this term, so we only have these three terms, all the other terms are 0. But actually we will only solve for the one dimensional case, which means we only consider the, we only consider this one. We only consider this one. We just ignore uh, y or z. Actually, in this case, we can just uh, assume that the the wave is propagating in x direction. Then we can just uh, limit it in a one dimensional case for the plane wave solution. For the plane wave solution. So this uh, this equation will look like uh, the e take the second partial derivative with respect to x equals one over c squared equals uh, part, second partial derivative of e with respect to time, like this. Maybe let us let me stop here.